Welcome to This Week in Poker. Coming up, Victory Poker CEO Dan Fleischman joins us in studio, joining us via Skype, November Niner John Raisner, as well as doubles poker finalist Phil Gordon. Also joining us via Skype, new Wicked Chops poker girl Victoria Moore. All of that plus a spirited debate on why there aren't more Asians and Jews in poker. Stay tuned. Did I mention Victoria Moore is on the show today? Yeah, I'm excited about that. Official Wicked Chops Poker Girl. She's got big, big shoes to fill. Yeah. Welcome back to This Week in Poker. I'm Chops. I'm joined by Entity Colin. How's it going? Back from Hawaii. How was Hawaii? Uh, you know, you can't complain. I was there for a week, stayed with uh, three other girls, so. Not other girls. <laughs> <laughs> three girls. I was my wife and, and other girls. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, I purposely, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, after I flew in, we drove together, did not mention it, did not want to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, I got married to my current first wife there five years ago. Yeah. Uh, I love it. It's the greatest place. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I could imagine it's a tough place to get married because there's a lot of distractions. And by distractions, I mean uh, Barry Greenstein type distractions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Barry Greenstein should have relocated yeah. to Hawaii. Also yeah. joining us in the corner, Brian. <laughs> How are you doing? I thought I was on like a men's Oprah for a second or something. <laughs> <laughs> kind of embarrassing. How's it going? Good. Yeah. We all have Western shirts on. We all have the same haircut. And we have <laughs> huge coated makeup today. Lots of makeup. They have yeah. a new makeup artist. So we're all. People are already commenting on that up. too. I oh, went on the makeup or yeah. the shirts? Makeup. Okay. Yes. Can we tell? Do we look better? I hope so. Yes. Also in studio. By the way, the first Dan thing Fleischman. the makeup guy yes. said, you guys all have bangs. So yeah. he commented on the hair. I know. Yeah. It was bangs. Anyway. Dan Fleischman. How are you? Pleasure to be here. Yeah. We've got a lot of stuff to cover with you later in the show, Lots including your deep run at the WSOP Europe main event and all things Victory Poker. So Victories, you know, they're stepping up. We're fighting along, you know, oh, yeah. fighting yeah. along. So a lot of ground, more ground than a typical day to cover. We're not going to waste a lot of time. We need to get right into it with Jess Wellman and Poker Headlines. Yes. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you guys? Good. Yeah, we're ready for a spirited debate on, on Asians and Jews and poker. <laughs> I'm well versed in, in such topics, <laughs> as I, I often get mistaken for an Asian person and a Jew. Yes. Uh, what's going on in poker this week? A lot of stuff, it seems like, after maybe some lesser, not necessarily downtime, but it seems like a lot of stuff's going on. I know. I've, I myself am the quick breather between Festa and leaving for Foxwoods in the morning. So I guess we'll get started with Festa since that seems to be what's on my mind. And it involves me. So clearly it's the most important thing. Right, so let's bring it um, back to you. Uh, Randall Flowers won the Festa Alago tournament, makes him the youngest two-time winner. He was the youngest winner before he won Barcelona at the age of uh, 20. Now he has won his second title at the age of 22. And might I suggest you adopt him as an entity because he's kind of sporting y'all's haircut. Uh, yeah, I saw some photos. Uh, I don't know if he's wearing a Western shirt or not right now, but if he was, then he's an absolute mortal lock. But uh, it seems like he should be getting more attention for this victory. What do you think? Uh, I think so. I think part of the problem is that the Barcelona win went so under the radar because it was during the the World Series last year, so people don't realize he's already won before. Um, he is so young, too. He hasn't been on the circuit as long as other players that it, it doesn't stand out as much. You also had the typical WPT 27 down to 6 erosion of big names. So we got a couple of good ones at the final table. You had Andy Frankenberger going for his second win in a season, Randall going for his second win. But when Chainsaw bubbles the final table, That's the ratings are going to drop. The ratings are going to drop. Yeah, we were doing the show live last week right as Madsen got knocked out. And when they were down to 14, you had Lauren Kling, a woman, Annette, who was chip leader, a woman, she flames out. Jeff, like you said, Alan. Uh, Chainsaw, yeah. Kessler, 
It's just, almost guaranteed now yeah. that that will happen. Yeah, you just kind of pick the six guys you haven't heard of, and there's your TV final table. Um, you know, I, it's a lot of internet guys, so I was happy to see them there. There wasn't a ton of play, though, so I don't know how interesting TV it'll make because it, it was everybody had 20 big blinds. It was no Dwight Pilgrim final table? There was, there was no Dwight Pilgrim. Pilgrim now, are you guys is, considering but... a uh, like a Dwight Pilgrim sponsor exemption for future final tables? <laughs> we just put it. We'll put him in with like eight to go. So he has to make it a little yeah. bit of the way. Right. Or it could be like million dollar challenge where you play your way to Dwight. Like you beat everybody <laughs> and then they put Dwight in and you have to beat him for the bracelet. And speaking of Festa, your your new show with BJ has debuted, right? It has. I, I find it kind of funny. Like, we did not ever think it would be like a show. Yeah. It was just like, oh, let's make a video kind of recapping the day. And now it's turned into this phenomenon unto itself. <laughs> I could be overselling it, but it seems like people like it. So we have been uh, already coming up with things for, fest, uh, for Foxwoods. And nice. I'm sure with Halloween and Connecticut and all that stuff, it'll be... Plenty more themed episodes. What? If it's going to be Halloween, are you going to go slutty nurse or slutty flight attendant? What are you going to dress up as? S slutty poker reporter. <laughs> slutty poker reporter. <laughs> you know what? My, see, my idea was I thought we, we should switch and have BJ dress up as me and me dress up as BJ. But maybe I should be slutty BJ Nemeth? Oh, man. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, just that's wrong. Take it back. Take it back right now. Oh, so what did he end up for the name for that show, too, by the way? Because I know it's going to be BJ and the Redhead. It seems like everybody's calling it BJ and the Redhead, but what's the, what's the name? We don't have one yet. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if we maybe never came up with one. I know everyone likes BJ and the Redhead, and I don't mind it, but I think some of the people within WPT think it it could be a little demeaning to let one of us have a name and the other be referred to as the redhead. Yeah, I find that offensive a little bit too, calling you a redhead. I mean, I think Ginger would be. BJ and the Ginger. What else is going on on the circuit scene? Uh, well, you have the WSOP circuit. It was in Hammond, still right. going on right now. Uh, Hammond has always been kind of one of, kind of this anomalous stop on the tour where it came in two or three years ago where the circuit was kind of waning in popularity and it was always this huge stop. It is once again a huge stop. The $1,600 main event drew 872 players. So nice little hefty prize pool there. Kurt Jewell from Frankfurt, Kentucky. Go Kentucky. <laughs> um, he ended up taking it down. He won 240000 and change. And then you also had William Reynolds at the final table, Brian Devonshire at the final table. While that one was huge, they did start the $10,000 regional championship, which is one of the new elements of the season. It's the first of four on the schedule this year. And I think that people thought it would be a little bigger. It got a great, it got a respectable turnout of 226, but I think some of reporters and players were forecasting a little bit higher. Really? Lots of good names, though. If, if you read the press release, Smashing. Yeah. <laughs> it was the biggest success since Coke rebranded Old Coke. Yeah. I mean, it's like I've never seen anything so exciting. Like, it feels like I'm outside the, the loop or something not being there right now. It's it makes me sad I'm not living in Hammond, so I could have taken it in from day one. 226 is respectable, though. I mean, if you're looking at circuit numbers from last year, they were seeing main events with, like, 55, right. 8, 7. The 226 is a great number compared to those numbers, and 10K is a little steep to go from 1,600 to 10K on a tournament schedule. You don't see big jumps like that all that often. So, And I, and I, I guess mean, and it drew a lot of big names, right? Yeah, I mean, so. it's it's a pretty stacked field when you look at it. There's about 50 left and a lot of names that I recognize. Uh, Ruthless, who apparently, by judging from Twitter, is just making quads over and over and over again and getting paid off en route to a victory. He's doing well. Um, I know Barry was there. Barry Greenstein just busted. Um, lots of big names. Jason Mercier, Dan O'Brien, that whole crew. So, it's I mean, it's a good group of people. I think that the circuit... I don't know if I would say it was resounding success on par with the Titanic movie, but it, it was good. I think that they, they should be pretty happy with that number, and hopefully you'll see that kind of turnout at the other three 
stops that are the 10Ks for the season. Now, there was a little bit of talk, uh, some rumors floating around about Hammond juicing the field a little bit. Have you heard anything? I heard they were giving out lots of seats. They were rewarding cash game players with seats into both the 1600 and the 10K. I, I don't remember where I read this, so I'm just going to blindly send it out there and pretend it's fact that someone said something about a strip club handing out seats. Dan, Dan, I saw you nodding your head. Have you heard they, stuff? They gave oh. out, you get five extra seats for every mega satellite. They were just handing it out. They were just handing out five extra that's, seats. I mean, it's a good idea, but they're giving away 50K, 50K. I mean, that's a lot to put into a tournament. Yeah, but it sure. worked. I mean, we were all talking about it. So, oh, yeah. I mean. Anything else, Jess? Give us one more big headline for the week. Uh, WSOP Circuit South Africa. Not quite Hammond, <laughs> but uh, it's actually, it, it's been pretty cool. They got some good names. You have Vanessa Russo, Maria Ho, Beth Shack. And Felipe Ramos just won the $1,100 PLO event. They got about 40 people with South African Jared Solomon taking second. If you want updates, I'm going to do a little shameless plug in the chat box. Bluff South Africa has some updates from the scene. If you care about that, the 5K vein event there starts tomorrow. I think Gus Hansen is one of the other people playing. So pretty cool that the international stop seems to be doing well as, as well. Do you, are they flying these pros in or are they going on their own? I am not positive. I feel like Gus uh, Hansen had some sort of charitable <laughs> element to it that required him, that was required of the casino to have him participate. I'm sure, and that's not unusual to have players kind of talk with the casino staff and say, well, I will come if maybe you help me fly in or comp my room. I've heard stuff like that for domestic casinos too, so not that you. unusual. All right. <laughs> okay, Jess, <laughs> thank you as always. Thank you. We'll have see fun. you next week. See you from Connecticut. Yeah, have fun in Foxwoods. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to see slutty poker reporter Jess Wellman from Foxwoods, <laughs> Connecticut. Brian, before we get into the rest of our interviews, we've got, I think, four people, including Dan Fleischman, lined up. Uh, how can our viewers interact? If there's somebody that's actually new if in that if, chat line. If there is someone new, it's very simple. You, uh, darn, I meant to have a cue card this week, so I didn't have to say this, but I don't. Type in a, uh, the letter Q, a colon, and uh, your question, and we'll get to it. It's that simple, Chops. Brian looks like 20 years younger with that makeup on. Does he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe about two. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take 40. OK. That All makeup right. artist had like machines and spray things. And <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was expecting like just a little yeah. yeah. No. Not the full yeah, airbrush. You had to force that process. <laughs> yeah. You were shaking your head somewhat about the uh, South Africa. Yeah, uh, the certain tournaments yeah. like that that are in obscure places, they, like when they talk to guys like Antonio, not only will they fly him out, they'll take care of hotel and the buy-in. Yeah. So. Paris is doing that? For certain events. Mm. Not, not, as, not in America, they don't really need to, but yeah, if you right. want to get household names to show up, I mean, you want, like, I talk to Unabomber and Antonio all the time about it because a lot of it comes through me. Mm -hmm. um, they'll offer them the buy-in, flight, and hotel, which is, it makes it worth it for them, but it's still obscure to go to, like, South Africa if you weren't planning on going there. Where are you going to go once you get there? So, right. yeah, I mean, it makes sense for them if you get a couple household names. I know they just, somebody did it with Phil Ivey a week or two ago. They booked him for something, yeah. uh, an upcoming event. And it's smart because that key, that key player can then bring media, and if they know he's going, Maybe a dozen other pros will come. If those dozen pros come, their friends and followers will come. So one, one key player can end up bringing 30 or 40 players. So yeah. smart. So for, again, to remind our viewers, we've got Dan Fleischman, the CEO of Victory Poker. Tell us about why you started Victory Poker. So I'd always loved poker um, for years and years. And I'd been doing my past company for 10 years, from 17 to 27 years old. And on the 10-year anniversary, me and my partner both resigned and we have a new CEO and all the employees running the company. And we still own it, but it was different. I wanted to do something. I want another feather in my cap. I want to try something else, and I love poker. So I knew I wasn't going to go out there and beat poker stars or full tilt. They're behemoths. They're like IBM and Bank of America mm -hmm. now. Um, but I did see a niche to build the coolest poker site in the world and build something that people could feel attached to and build a brand that way. So I didn't expect it to happen so fast. I mean, the things we're doing now, I thought it would be two or three years from now. Um, but it's been working, it's been fun. When was yeah. your actual start date? February 1st. It's only been like seven or eight months. Yeah. Wow, it seems like it's been a lot it longer, It too. feels like it. Yeah. Uh, you're actually already getting a lot of questions in from the chat, so let's get to this one, because I'm not familiar. What's up with the Victory Tattoo Challenge? Oh, okay, so this kid decides to challenge me on uh, Facebook out of nowhere. He'd been following me and commenting all the time, and then he says, hey, let's raise the stakes. 
I was like, what, raise what stakes? We're just on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, I'll come play you, best out of 10, heads up matches. If I beat you, then I get to be on the $100,000 sponsorship contest. He put me as one of the 25. If you beat me, I'll tattoo my whole back with victory poker and anything you want. Okay. So he flew out last weekend. We filmed the whole thing. Um, there'll be a video in like a week. I, I beat him. And he's a big kid, 6'4", 300 pounds. And very nice guy. Um, but we started the process, and he's getting a full victory poker tattoo on his back. Damn. <laughs> a, lot of victory wow. poker, a lot of victory poker branding lately yeah. in other media. I wouldn't necessarily call a tattoo maybe other media, <laughs> right. but still, entourage. Yeah. So quite a lot for that. Yeah. How much you pay for that? I, I paid zero. Okay. Um, I know that Stars paid a lot last year. Um, I paid zero because of our relationship, and we actually got him to be on three episodes. It was only supposed to be for one, and they built us into next season. Okay. So nice. now the storyline is going to get pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I remember seeing E's secretary with, yeah. like, she was playing in the background, <laughs> yeah. the screen, or the tables were open. Yeah, she'll be playing more next year. Okay. So it's, it's a good thing. Um, yeah, I was with the producers last night in that house game, and we were talking about some of the cool ideas for next time, and it's going to be fun. That, that, that's my favorite show in the world, so that was, like, a big thing that happened in the first year. Yeah, no, the... And this was one of their better seasons. It was like yes. they, they had some down seasons. They definitely and this did, was but one of the better seasons. We got to find out show. where's where is he going with this? Is he going to fall off the deep end? The main right. character, you know. And can you really get addicted and ruin your life in cocaine in two weeks? Because <laughs> 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 that's what he did. Uh, question from one of our viewers, Boxer Bill: Where do you see Victory Poker in five years? Wow, um, I want to be one of the top ten sites. Um, but I'm never, I'm not planning or building this for one of the top three or four sites. Mm -hmm. um, five years is a long time. I'm more looking at next year and two years and three years. I kind of have to piece it, you know. We did so much so fast. Right. I don't know about five years. That's a long time. Full tilt's only been five or six years. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're doing a gazillion dollars a day. So for me, it's just building the brand and doing everything I can. Since I can't outspend the other big sites, I have to do all the unique things and get on the TV shows, get in the movies, sign music deals and record labels and all these different things that we've been doing to try to make our own lane because I can't go out there and fight against those guys. Are you, when you do all these things and you're, you're pretty active in so many different directions, are, is it all about like ROI or is it more about brand building to you? It's about brand building. There's things that I do that I'm definitely not getting the money back on, but the marketing that's coming back from it is tenfold, twentyfold. Right. Um, we just signed a big DJ named DJ Steve Aoki, mm -hmm. um, and he then brings other celebrities and other artists to the thing. We did a deal with a big record label. It's the largest independent record label in the world, and they have these big bands like Evanescence and Creed, mm -hmm. and these things bring in so many different deals from them because once you have that deal, now all of a sudden somebody that follows that band or somebody that follows this or follows that, they want to do a deal with you. So sometimes it's a loss leader that you may spend extra money doing a big deal with one company, but may get a bunch of deals right. from that. Yeah. Question from uh, viewer Nima Time. How has the move to the Cake Network been for Victory? It's a whole new world. I mean, I love the guys at Everleaf, and they tried hard, but the Cake Network is just like, you can just deposit whenever you want. You know, yeah. like before we had a $200 cap, and you'd have to submit phone bills and statements and all these things, and you'd have to wait 24 hours to deposit. With Cake, you can do $200, $5,000, $10,000. They, they process tens of millions of dollars a year, so they, they can handle everything. Yeah. And there's games 24 hours a day instead of 16, like at the other one. So now I just feel like I'm at home. I always wanted to be with Cake. I mean, again, I love the Everleaf guys. It's nothing against right. them. It's just Cake always felt like home to me, mm -hmm. and I'm really happy I'm there. And they're, we're doing a lot of cool promotions, and they're really open to what we're doing. So I'm going to try to help build the whole network. Yeah. And, you know. I see a couple more questions. Um, v Rob has been asking, what do you think about the World Series of Poker, your bracelet controversy? You actually <laughs> were chip leader going into um, yeah. the final table. Yeah, even without me being at the final table, I think it's just silly to even discuss it being mm -hmm. not the same as a bracelet. Uh, you win any tournament's important, whether it's a World Poker Tour, or World Series of Poker, or World Series of Poker Europe. I, don't, I really don't care what it is. I mean, you can win the Heartland Poker Tour tournament. It's still a big deal to win a tournament that has a good size field. And to compare, just because people, not as many people travel there or they're not doing as many satellites there, that's just less dead money. Because just because you have 7,000 players in a tournament in Vegas where 6,500 of them have no shot, yeah. it just it doesn't feel the same when I walk into the table at the World Series of Poker Europe and it's Daniel Negreanu and Huck Seed and Gus Hansen. I'm, like, I'm facing the guys that... <laughs> 
it's all household right. names. Yeah. So. But I think there's like V Rod <coughs> saying, but is it a bracelet? I mean, there's so much value that people attach to saying, especially with bracelet counts. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you think it should count Ab as an equal? Absolutely. There's not even it shouldn't even be a discussion. I mean, I think it's almost rude to be a discussion. The World Series of Poker made something. They built a great brand. They wanted to do a tournament in Europe or Japan or China. It's it's same thing. And just because the fields aren't the same size, anybody can fly there. People are flying from Australia and Canada and Malaysia to come to the American one. They can fly to Europe the same way. So it's, it's an open field. Nothing's different. Your, uh, your players have had a way about making a little bit of controversy away from the foul. You had the Dan Blitz scenario over the summer. One of the questions from our, uh, one of our viewers is how you feel about the uh, Andrew Robel big game controversy. Um, it's... It's an interesting situation because I really respect Tony G, and I understand what he does as a character on a show, just right. like just like Phil Hellmuth. Um, you know, and Tony G owns one of the biggest news sites in poker, so I think he's great as a businessman, and I think he's great as a showman. The, the problem was he did it the second Andrew walked in the door, and nothing to do with Andrew playing a hand yet. And Andrew's always been good on TV; he gets invited to High Stakes Poker, PokerStars.net, all these shows because he is a character and he is fun and has a great laugh and he plays crazy. And for them to call him a nit in the first seven seconds when he hadn't even played a hand yet. Right. And the hands, that, if you notice, the hands he got were nine deuce, eight four, eight five, ace three. Like, yeah. he wasn't getting a hand. And, to, and you have a maniac behind you, so he had to play tighter. And then for Daniel to say things like, uh, Tony, give me a high five for the assist. Like, that's cheating. You shouldn't be angle shooting or saying, because he called the clock, Andrew folds ace jack on ace high board, and you're saying Get high five for the assist. What are you doing? That's not proper. You're not supposed to be te teammates in poker. We're playing an individual game. And that affected the decision for Andrew to fold that ace jack. So that, especially with Daniel, like uh, being an ambassador to the game, he already had the problem with Sean Deeb, that one hand World Series of Poker Europe, which was out of line. Then he has something with the net. And then he has, uh, there's just too many times where eventually when it's, you're the one involved in all the scenarios over and over and over, who's, who's at fault? You know, and I respect him. I played with him for three days in a row at the World Series of Poker Europe. He's a great player. He's a great ambassador. But there's too many of these instances now. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I really hated what he did with Andy Duke. I, I, not to say that I like her or don't, it's just that the, that four-letter word is just the worst word in the language, and you just don't need to go there. Yeah. They and can make a point without that. And somebody's pointing out Tony G and Daniel would never, for a second, consider treating Barry Greenstein like that, you know, call, calling him. I mean, there's a lot of big-name pros out there yeah. that are nuts. <clears throat> yeah. Um, not saying Barry Greenstein is. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they, they could do it, too. And, and was there anything prior to this that Tony G, yeah. you know, is there a reason well, why he picked well, on Well, Tony, Robo? Tony and Robo have played before, but it was more showmanship, and t Andrew didn't really mind that. Mm -hmm. He minded it with Daniel because him and Daniel have been battling online in the 100, 200 a lot. And Daniel has improved his game a lot, and Andrew's yeah. talked about it right. for months. He's like, wow, Daniel's getting better and better and better. But Andrew's obviously beating him a lot. I think he had just taken like 150k off him or something. Yeah. Right? yeah, and it's been he's been the the catalyst of a lot of these poker games on Poker Stars for that game. And Andrew's been there fighting and battling, and it's it's been great. The problem is Daniel's maybe built a resentment towards him mm -hmm. because it almost looked vicious the way he was attacking him. There was just no reason for it. If the guy wants to fold his hands and his hands were eight four and say it's not like he was folding ace queen and like right. king queen suited <laughs> like he wasn't making some hero laydowns he just kept folding eight fours and nine deuces so it, it was just it was it felt vicious it felt I don't know if you want to call it jealousy or upset with what has happened prior it just it was so over the top it was unnecessary and Daniel's not that kind of a showman he's other he's a great yeah. showman as far as you know playing with amateurs and doing all the fun cutesy stuff. And for him to do the vicious thing, it just doesn't suit him. We have Victoria Moore on Skype that we're going to go to in just a minute. Before we do, though, you've done a fantastic job bringing in some of the best models. Yeah. What? Just, just tell <laughs> us a little about that. Uh, What's up with that? We have, we have a video, too, to show before Victory. Victoria um, comes on. It's, it's a hard job, you know? Yeah. No, <laughs> no but no, no. I mean, I, I remember I talked to you earlier uh, at the World Series of Poker. In a way, you've kind of stepped in and filled, from a branding perspective, a little bit of the old like Bodog sure. void, where they were really pushing the lifestyle, pushing the hot girl thing, yeah. and they've stepped away from that. And somebody needed to step in and fill that role, and yeah. fortunately, <laughs> you have. But uh, I think it's not half-ass. I mean, no, it's, like, it's not half-ass yeah. at all. Yeah, I mean, you're you're dropping money yeah, on this, and, 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 but you're, and you're getting great models yeah. too. It's not like it's it's really good. Like the the models we're picking, where it's not just about their looks, but also their personality, their following. There's a lot of uh, formula that goes into it. It's not just like, wow, she's hot. There's thousands and thousands of hot girls that you could pick from. But we're getting girls that are part of the brand and really like are, feel active to what we're doing. 
but also now the returns actually come in because our last video has like 183,000 views in two months and all these right. videos are getting a lot of traction now. So I'm going to pick more models. We want an Asian model and a Russian model and an African American model. We want each different model to, the same way with the poker site on the sponsored pros, right. I want the different cultures to represent the brand. So we're going to get different models to keep increasing. It won't be like dozens and dozens, but right. we want to build I think you're smart going to the UK, first and foremost. Yeah, I just love yeah. the accents. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they turn out, they turn out though. I mean, we had Keely yeah. Hazel, Vicky Blows, and now Victoria. On that note, let's go to the clip, Brian. We have a clip that we, we can do. go to. Vic tell, tell, tell the people what they can look forward to in this Victoria Moore clip. And then we're going to get her on Skype. Lollipops. Lollipops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's get Victoria Moore on Skype. How you doing? Uh, hello. You? Hey there, how you doing, Victoria? I'm good, that was a bit cringy though. <laughs> you don't like that video? Um, yeah, I like it, but um, seeing it like that up that close, it was, um, it was funny. <laughs> how are you, CEO? I love your accent. I just like seeing you. Does she call you CEO <laughs> all the time? Yeah, it's Antonio's fault. Antonio did that, and now everybody does it. Yeah. And now it's like spreading out. I don't mind it. It's just sometimes when you first meet somebody, and then other people are calling you CEO, yeah. you have to kind of explain it. But it's not the worst thing. Now, Victoria, you join Joanna Krupa, Keely Hazel, and Vicky Blows as our official Wicked Chops Poker Girls. Where were you when you first heard that we named you the official girl of Wicked Chops Poker for 2010? Um, well, firstly, thank you so much. It's an honour. Um, and I believe that Dan was the one that told me, actually. Um, because I, even though I am a model for a poker site, I am really sorry to say that I don't follow poker quite as much as I should. Um, so, But I didn't know anything. I was just watching before, and I didn't know anything about that Andrew thing. And I'll give that guy a little talking to, I will. <laughs> <laughs> have you met Daniel Negreanu before? No, I, well, I might have, yeah. but I, I don't know if I have. But I will give him a right talking to, because I love Andrew. I, actually, do it right now. Look in the camera and tell him <laughs> what you want to hey, say. You stay away from Andrew. Don't you call him names? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> while you might not have followed poker much, are, you're, you're, are you picking up a little bit? Are you following a little bit more now? Yeah, no, definitely. Since working with Victory, um, I've tried to follow it a lot more because obviously when I'm at conventions and stuff like that and I've got to talk to guys and stuff, I, I need to know a bit more. So um, I picked a bit up from Antonio, um, picked a bit up from Dan. He's very, very good at getting you loads of information um, so that I can understand it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just Gen, you know, just following and looking around at, at stuff like, you know, your site and everything. If somebody's asking about your pillows back there. What, oh, my pillows. Um, this is um, Wonder Woman, and that is Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just smile every time I see her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Same with Dan. So, will we be seeing you stateside? Are you going to be making any trips over here for uh, anything victory related? Well, hopefully. I mean, Dan needs to pull his finger out and sort out the next shoot. And, yeah. and then we'll be uh, coming over. Yeah, she came, she came during the World Series, uh, the American one. Okay. And then during the final table, she came and supported me during the final table as well. Oh, great. So, and you've spent some time in Vegas. I, I read something about your uh, 21st birthday party. That you came to oh, Vegas? Yeah. yeah, I've spent loads of time in Vegas. I've been about six times now, and it's one of the best places in the world. Not that I've been many places in the world, but um, the places that I have been, Vegas is definitely like the top. Um, so, yeah, I will be coming a lot more. I spent my 21st birthday there. I'll probably spend a lot more birthdays there, to be honest. <laughs> and. <laughs> 
and um, yeah, shooting with Victory will be the next time that I probably come over. And I was hoping to come. I was hoping to come to LA for the Halloween party, but it's just not going to happen. I've got too much work over here. Yeah, what kind of stuff? I know you have a calendar out. What other stuff are you doing? Well, I'm doing major promotion for that. So while we're here, I will plug where you can get it from. Uh, you can go to globalcalendars.co.uk and buy it from there. Um, but basically, I'm just, you know, I'm a commercial model. So most of the modelling that I do is like stuff for adverts and catalogues and stuff like that. And what's so, up next for you? I, you know, we followed uh, Keely Hazel for a while. It seems like she's kind of um, disappeared a little bit. But are you going to do this for a while and, and hope to do acting or what else? Um, I, to be honest, like I just take it as it comes, and just there's so many things that come up, um, so you can't really plan. Um, you can't really plan much. So like Victory Poker, I was never planning to work for a poker site, and that just sort of that that just happened so um, I'm not going to plan too much I'll just see where it all takes me but the next thing quite good that I've got coming up that I'm really looking forward to is the Fire Girls calendar mm -hmm. for their 2012 end of the world calendar um, you guys probably have have it over there I think you do anyway All right. are you familiar with Fire Girls? Uh, I don't no, I don't think so. Dan? <laughs> oh, I'm familiar just because I follow. Of course. <laughs> it's funny. I think the calendar thing is a lot bigger in the UK. I don't know what that says about the US that it's not right. a big thing here, but um, yeah, definitely. I was speaking to Sarah Underwood about it because I said you should have your own calendar out, and she said they just don't do, you know, they just don't do them over in America. So, but your girl should definitely. You know do what it. I think? I think the internet pretty much destroyed that business because people can just. Google for the images uh, rather than buy the yeah. calendar. But the images yeah, but are like some of the best images. Yeah. Suggestion for uh, the it's not, poker. It's not the same as having, you know, having it on your wall, is it? For sure. Yeah. I iPad calendar. iPad calendar. I, I think we should I, make our own calendar. Victoria, we've got to go. But I, thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. And uh, we look thank forward to meeting you next time you make a trip into LA or Vegas. Yay. Thank you for having me. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you. Bye. Well done, Dan. <laughs> she makes me happy. I like her. <laughs> yeah, no, that that was a uh, that was a good find in the in the victory modeling she, search. She works hard. She pushes out everything that we do. We don't have we don't ask her to do all these extra things, but she's just. We want to go to a convention in Budapest. She's on the first plane there. We want. Yeah. We were going to put out a video. She posted on every profile she has. They don't have to do all those things. It's just mm -hmm. it becomes natural for them. They feel a part of the brand, and now we make her part of the brand. And we feel like she's part of the brand. So. Yeah. Right. She, no, I, I think we have to ask you, there were a lot of questions earlier about um, online poker legislation. Uh, you know, as a CEO of a poker site, sure. you know, what are your thoughts as far as, you know, what will happen and what will, you know, how does that change Victory Poker's plan if that legislation comes through? Right. So, I mean, I talk about this a lot, obviously, because I'm in the, the different situation since I'm one of the most public CEOs that you can feel, touch, and see, and I live in America six months out of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I have, you know, spent six figures on lawyers to make sure I'm doing everything perfect and proper right. and the accountants are perfect and proper and everything is there because at any day they could just knock on your door and say, hey, what, you know. So Do you worry about that? Not, not really because um, to me online poker is not illegal. Mm -hmm. It's the financial transactions of sending money back and forth is what you're actually doing to break the UIGA. Mm -hmm. So wire transfer, wire fraud or terrorist act is what it is. I'm not a terrorist, you know, and I'm not wiring money back and forth. The Cake Network handles all the processing, all the credit card transactions. They're based in a foreign country. I can't see credit cards. I don't have access to credit cards. I can't see their files. I can't see any of the back end. I, I have no access to it. So I'm not breaking the technical UIGA whatsoever. I'm just a marketing company. I'm like an affiliate in a sense. Um, will it get legalized or legislated? Or I'm sorry, legalized or regulated? Absolutely. It has to. I mean, they're missing out on billions and billions and billions of dollars that we want to pay them. I mean, they, they look at the market now and they're like, oh, we can make four or five billion dollars a year. They don't realize there's so much more that comes from it because sure. now Pepsi's going to sponsor and yeah. Budweiser and Burger King and NikePoker.com and GatoradePoker.com and, you know, all these, all these other things that are coming from it. I think that's an assumption, but I still don't necessarily think that will happen. I mean, I think 
we've seen the big brands stay away from the World Series of Poker. You know, that's. But I still think though that part of that though is because there is that: is this legal or is it not legal? But that's just inherent to gambling and poker in general, too, though. A little bit. Yeah. The thing is that poker has become the new golf. Yeah. And I've been meeting with some of the biggest brands in the world and some of the major, major financial institutions have been flying me out to come meet with them because they're all expecting to get regulated. And some of these major household name brands are going to do poker sites mm -hmm. and they need people to A, run them or B, advise them or right. C, show them what to do. I mean, they don't know what's going to happen. And you're going to see other major, major names, whether it's Apple or Sega or Xbox, these guys are going to come out with poker sites. They're not going to be proper at first because unless they bring in, you know, what Harris did is they hired ex CEO of Party Poker. Yeah. Here's $30 million bankroll, come from Party Poker. As soon as it gets legislated, boom, go right. to do your thing. So it is going to get legislated. It is going to get regulated. Um, it's not going to happen any second now. And even if they said today, okay, boys, it's all regulated, go to work. It'll still take two years of paperwork. It's still going to go through so many processes, three different court houses, jurisdiction. Right. It, it's going to take a while. Even if they said today it's it's on, it doesn't mean anything. We're still us. probably a couple of years away. You yeah. said that you're spending a lot of money on oh, yeah. on lawyers and legal advice. Yeah. What's the time frame that you're hearing from those guys when they? Uh, a lot of people think the realistic things are to actually. For us to see a real change in, is 2012. Um, for us to be in full fledged is 2012 or 2013. Because even if they said today. It's all good. It, it's just years of paperwork. There's so many things that have to happen because now there's the licenses, the regulation, right. how the tax is going to work. We all have to become, we have to be able to, to block out people under 18. We have to be able to block out. There, there's so many factors that are going to come in that everybody has to, is going to have to implement and stars until they're ready to do those things. Um, but there's a lot of factors that are going to come into play when it does become regulated. And the, there's billions and billions of free money on the line for the government. So. It's going to happen, it's just they have to work some things out. We'll get a little bit more into the discussion on online poker regulation uh, with Dan after we go to John Raisner, who's on Skype. Can we pull John up, please? How you doing, John? Hey, how you guys doing? Very, very good. So uh, we've been talking a little bit about uh, online poker regulation, legalization. What among the players on the tour? What's uh, what? Are, what are you guys hearing? What do you think a, a realistic time frame is? Um, I don't really talk to a lot of guys about it, to be honest, and I don't read up on it too much, to be honest. Um, I would think probably in about the next uh, six months, if I had to take a guess off the top of my head. Yep. Has Full Tilt officially come out and announced who are going to be the patch guys at the final table? Are you one of them? Um, I'm pretty sure all of us are going to be patched. Uh, I think they decided just to patch everyone. I, I think they ended up letting them, them do that. Oh, so the so the WSOP is actually going to let everybody wear the patch. That's that's what I'm hearing right now. I mean, they haven't told me that I'm not wearing one. So okay, that's what we've been hearing. So that's what I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, we haven't heard that yet. So uh, it'd be very interesting if they if they do that and they go with the. Pretty much a, a full tilt bombardment at the final table. Well, yeah, well, yeah. It's, I think it'd be more interesting if they don't do it because uh, then it'd be interesting the three they pick. Right. I mean, the, mainly the third one's the one that they'd be thinking about. They have, uh, I guess they're definitely doing Dolan because he's in second, and then they want to do Grinder just because of his name. And then, um, I mean, obviously he's a great player, but, and then uh, I don't know who they would pick the third one. That's, that's what would be interesting. Have you, uh, how have you been prepping for the final table? Have you been doing anything, watching the broadcast, trying to analyze your play or other people's play? Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I got a couple of all the tapes together uh, the last day or two. So I'll be watching all that in the next couple of days um, just to be checking out, you know, some, some of their tells and stuff when, when, when they uh, have hands, when they're bluffing, stuff like that. And I think that they might do the opposite of the final table. Who knows? Right. Um, but also, as we speak right now, I'm getting ready to do my final ta table preparation uh, at, at, at this place right now. I got uh, my buddies together. We got all the chips set up and the exact uh, seats with the players. Um, they all know their, their roles of the player. They know how those players play. We went over that. We studied all that. And uh, we're getting ready to, to do a, you know, a demo thing right now at the exact final table. That's, that's well, really that's Well really done, cool. yeah. I haven't, I haven't heard anybody in the last few years uh, trying that approach yet. So. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think it's going to help, and, you know, we could even stop in between hands. Obviously, we're going to take it all serious, but we could stop in certain situations and talk about what, what, what we all think would be the best move, 
the best equity move to do, do in this spot. Even if I'm not in the hand, it, it, two other guys, we could just pause right. and talk about how if I, if it was me in the hand. You know, a lot of good situations have come up, so we're just going to do it uh, tonight for a good five solid five hours, tomorrow night for a good solid five hours, and uh, hopefully we get a lot of good situations that come up in those 10 hours. Now, now you're good friends with the grinder, and mm -hmm. uh, how much have you guys talked in the last couple of months about the final table? Um, about the final table, not so much. Uh, we mess around joking about stuff, uh, you know, uh, you know, get some rest uh, for the final table so you get second, you know, saying goofy stuff like that. But uh, we just talk when we're, when we're on trips and stuff like the World Series of Poker Europe and in Greece, we went to the Full Tilt Poker Classic. You know, we kind of just talk about um, the stuff that's going on during those tournaments that we're in right at the time, yeah. you know, or, or, or big hands that can't come up. And then when we're on break, we discuss some strategy about that kind of stuff. But as for a final table, we haven't really discussed much about the players or any of the player or anything. Um, I don't think either one of us want to give away too much, and as good as friends we are, once we're there, you know, we're going to be competing, and it's huge for both of us. Is your dream scenario you guys going heads up or him busting first so you don't have to deal with him anymore? <laughs> uh, my, my dream scenario is me winning and him doing second best to me, so I guess that I guess would be heads up. Uh, everyone, everyone has said that to me the most, oh, that'd be the coolest and biggest thing ever for TV and... <laughs> Poker. If you two got heads up, it'd be the greatest thing ever. So I guess that'd be great. And then um, obviously, I just want him to do the next step best to me. So and I want to win. So I'd like for him to get second. <laughs> do you know? Uh, have you picked the song that you're coming out to yet? Do you know what you're coming out to? <laughs> uh, we just picked it today, uh, actually. Um, Forever by Drake and Eminem. I don't know if you guys are familiar <laughs> yeah. with that. Yeah. If you, if you listen to the, the first verse, uh, that's what we're going to have playing. And a lot of just the things that they say in the song is just me, you know, stuff that how I came about me and poker and, um, you know, with haters or whatever. It just it's got some good verses. To listen to it when you get home tonight and you understand what I'm saying. All right. Yeah, we've you know, if you do win, um, you know, are you ready to step into the role as a, as a poker ambassador? We've seen with Peter Eastgate and talked with like Joe Cata about, um, you know, that it's great and it's nice winning all that money, but there's a lot of responsibilities that go with it. Really, you know, I think with Joe, we saw like, you know, um, your whole year is pretty much consumed with appearances, with right. playing tournaments. You really don't get to enjoy, you know, I don't think he even went home hardly um, during that first year. Are you ready for that? Um, to be honest, I really am, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I like to uh, travel on, I like to make appearances and help out people and talk to people and explain situations and help people out and those kind of things and you know it's all it's all good fun i like uh dressing up going to places and doing those kind of things so i think that would be a, a fun thing for me and i would do it really well and carry myself really well a question from our uh, chat log in the in the live stream i like this one have you and grinder swapped percentages um no <laughs> no we have not and do you think you will Nope. <laughs> and, I mean, there's a, there's some. Uh, they handed out a, a thick rule packet a after the final nine. We had a meeting the next day. Uh -huh. and they handed out a thick rule packet, and one of the things that was mentioned in that, which a lot of people don't know about, is uh, negotiations and things like that with the other people at the table. You're automatically disqualified. Okay. Really? That's absurd. So, I mean, that's just something that. <laughs> We know to stay away from. Yeah, for sure. Uh, last question for you. This is something uh, Colin and I were talking about uh, on the way into the show today. You win the main event. You got something close to, to $9 million, uh, in the bank now. Who's the first model that you call up and you're like, hey, I'm John Rayson. I just won $9 million. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh... <laughs> Victoria Moore? I'm, 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 I'm going to send out a mass text to all of them. How about that? <laughs> good move. John, good luck at the final table. We'll see, you we'll see you down there at the Rio, and thanks for coming on the show. Okay, sure. Thank you guys for having me. Yep. Thanks. I like John. I like his strategy. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. that's I love that he's practicing. That's great. Yeah. I think we talked, you know, after the November nine was decided about the good, bad, and meh for right. poker, and we weren't so sure. I, I was actually. You're you're ready definitely to in the more good. in the good camp. Yeah, that's. just because I think he's young. He's um, seems like a cool guy. Mm -hmm. um, would represent poker well. Speaks well. You know, he's a guy that grinded out. You know, online somewhat in the beginning, and definitely the tournament yeah. scene. So, I think he'd be great for poker. Yeah. 
we were talking, uh, I think it was actually the night of uh, when they played down to the November 9. Yeah. But, you know, John was mentioning that they might end up patching up everybody. Right. Uh, <laughs> which I'd be really surprised if they still have, if on broadcast, uh, if the ESPN folks allow that to happen. Right. But uh, about maybe going in and trying to, to swoop up, did you guys try and yeah. get in there and patch? I did talk to them that night, and since then I've made friends with some of the guys. Um, Full Tilt handed out deals to pretty much everybody, seven out of the nine, right. and Stars has two guys. Um, so it's an interesting predicament because they're only allowed to have three players in, technically, right? Um, which was a very clear rule that they made. Um, I don't know what's going to happen because even though I'm friends with some of them and I've made them, you know, I've talked to them and made offers, um, the agents and the players don't really know what Full Tilt's going to do until the last second because ESPN hasn't said that they're not going to uh, they're going to allow them to do more right. three patches. But Full Tilt, I think, is genius. Keep it, let it ride. You know, because there's only me and one or two other sites that will come in and try to get them. Uh, Poker Stars obviously wants one more so they can hit their three. Um, but I think that Full Tilt, what they're going to end up doing now is I think they've realized they might do that uh, learn, chat, play with the pros, one of those, right. like they've been using on the Full Tilt Doubles Challenge, right. yeah. your, your sponsor. Uh, like, use the patch that doesn't actually say Full Tilt on it, and then as people bust, switch them out. Right. Um, I don't want to give them any advice, but they're smart enough to figure it out. So <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that might be the way they go. Um, but I'm, I'm going to make my last second offers. I'm going to be there in person, and I'm going to be there the day before. And right. I know four or five of the guys now. I would like to have one of them, but I want them as part of the actual team. I'm not just trying to right. stick a patch on them. Like, I wouldn't put a patch on one or two of the guys that are on the table. Right. But the majority of that table is How much really do you think good. it would cost you? Um, to give you an example, for the chip leader... Uh, last year, two two household name sites offered three hundred thousand um, dollars. My deal would be different than that, and that would, that's only for a chip leader. For a normal guy at a final table, it can range anywhere from fifty to two hundred. Um, Full tilt got these guys before they got there, when they were down to two, three, or four tables. They had everybody that's at that table except for Jonathan Dolan. He got re he got patched after they busted ten handed. Right. He didn't have a deal until then. Yeah. Who's actually would be as Kev Math sent in a question about who I'd want. It's Jonathan Dolan. Yeah. Um, who would you want? Jonathan, uh, who wouldn't I want? Yeah. Uh, I just say candy. <laughs> I mean, the the kid that's in last place in chips, yeah. just because he doesn't have a lot of chips, right. and um, he the move he made with the King Jack was for 22 million chips or 26 million chips, um, and he just got lucky that Theo Jorgensen, who just got signed today, yeah. um, called it off with the, you know the flush draw thing. Right. Um, I didn't. But if I, it wasn't him, it would be Candio. Um, Candio. That you'd lease one. We, I wouldn't sign him. Right. One, he's in, in, in Italy. We can't because of the licensing. Oh, yeah. um, but that move he made with the seven five on the six six right. five board was disgusting. Yeah. Real, real quick though, <laughs> before we go to Brian, um, Washington State. I saw some questions there. Is Cake going to or v Victory Poker? Um, it, it's completely up to Cake Network. Yeah. If they want to back out, I'll back out with them. If they want to stay. Have you talked to them about it? Yeah, we talked about mm -hmm. it. Um, their stars pulled out. Tilt hasn't decided yet. It's basically, it's up to cake. If, right. they, if they want to pull out, I'm just going to do what they do. Okay. All right. Brian. Chops. We were talking about Phil Gordon and doubles poker. Phil is on Skype. We'll go to him in just a minute. But tell us a little about doubles poker and I will. a little Bef sponsor break. Before I get to that, I have two other quick sponsors. We missed our, our earlier break. I'd like to uh, thank StormOnDemand.com. It's our virtual host for This Weekend Poker, This Weekend Network, and uh, a brilliant company. Go to StormOnDemand.com. Our other sponsor, Poker VT, an online poker training site. We had Daniel Negreanu on last week talking about it. And uh, if you go to pokervt.com/signup and use the uh, promo code TWIP10, you get 25% off activation fee plus three months off and unlimited videos. What was that code again? It's brilliant. TWIP10. Can you, can you tweet that out after the show? And that's exclusive, too. I don't think you can get that it, anywhere else. <laughs> in the entire world. <laughs> that's exclusive. Yeah. This week in Poker 10. Doubles Poker Championship. Very exciting. Chops, you started watching it, I think, two weeks ago. They are down to their, uh, <laughs> their final table. There's four teams left, uh, two episodes left, and uh, the winners get a million dollars. They chop it up between two of them. We have Phil Gordon coming up next. He is uh, partners with Letterer on this uh, brilliant TV show, and... Do they win? We don't know, but we do have a hand real quick before we go to, before we go to Phil. We have a, a hand and a, uh, I just forgot, 
fill in a letter against uh, Huxley to Noun Cunningham, and uh, it involves one of the timeouts. And this hand kind of sums up kind of how fun doubles poker is to watch. All right, let's see it. So we'll go to that. Seven of hearts that does not complete anything for Seaton Cunningham. It gives him a pair of sevens. And now Gordon leads out. It's almost as if Letterer and Gordon are playing this hand completely differently. They're on completely different pages. That's exactly right. Putting it all together, they took a highly unusual line of betting the flop, then check calling the turn, then betting the river. Now we have a timeout. What do you consider him doing? I was thinking he has like a king nine or something. Yeah, I just think he has like a jack nine or something. I think I was over there yelling at him. I think I was right. King and raising. Yeah. I think I was like that too. Let's see what's this do. But then he's like so I know, crazy I about it. He might just call him. Sure. They're not really studying him. I don't think they have a good hand. I think it's just they can do harder than what's the right go bring up. I think they're the better, I think. 300. Yeah. Okay. Interesting that Huck got a read from Phil and Howard away from the table. It's a big raise from Cunningham. He makes it 300,000. And Gordon is confused. A very interesting play by... So there is a good taste of what you'll see coming up on Doubles Poker. We've got Phil Gordon, old friend of, uh, old friend of the site, on Skype. Let's go to Phil. How you doing? Hey Phil. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, hey, Phil, congrats on the 25th finish in the uh, World Bridge Championship. <laughs> Was that just you and a bunch of, like, blue-haired ladies and Scandinavians? Yeah, at the top level, not so much so. Uh, most, of the, most of the people are under 60, uh, and it's all guys, really, in the top 100, but... Uh, yeah, it was a, you know, it was a good performance, I guess. Uh, overall, I'm, I'm pleased with uh, finishing 25th, uh, you know, but uh, it, it's it's certainly a lot different than the game of poker, that's for sure. What, what would you rather win, a uh, bracelet or the World Bridge Championship? A <laughs> uh, bracelet, for sure. But, uh, the World Bridge Championship's not so far behind. Uh, I, I, I have won two national championships in bridge, and I guess those are kind of like... Uh, those would kind of be like standard World Series of Poker bracelets, with the World Championship being like the uh, the main event uh, kind of uh, kind of bracelet. But uh, my, actually, I think my chances of winning uh, the World Bridge Championship are significantly higher than they are of me winning the uh, World Poker Championship. I know nothing about bridge, but yeah. that's team oriented, right? It's partner related. Part so you're playing with one other uh, one other player, and uh, your performance is well almost almost entirely dependent on the performance of your partner. So it's pretty much your partner's fault that you only finished 25th? Yeah, it's all his fault. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong for <laughs> the 180 hands or so that we played in the in the final, so it was all him. How much do you win for a tournament like that? Oh, I won about minus $3,000, uh, which <laughs> was my expenses for the week. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't pay anything, there's no prize money. Now, another partner event, doubles poker. You're at the finals. Yeah. It is a totally unique concept to other poker programming out there. What was your favorite thing, what you most liked about doubles poker? I'll tell you, uh, all the players uh, were really into the format and, and just, uh, you know, hanging out in the green room in between matches or, you know, when we were on break, everyone was talking about how much fun they were having. And uh, it really was a unique experience for all the players. Uh, of course, you know, I had a great time because I was winning and, and doing well, but uh, even the players that were losing, I think, had a great time uh, and didn't mind losing their 50000 or, you know, whatever. It, uh, the, the entry fee was absurd. $50,000 to play in this thing? I mean, yeah. but uh, they found 32 suckers and, uh, you know, willing to, to pony up, and everyone had a blast. What was uh, your least favorite thing, the 50000 or Annette? <laughs> 
You know, I really love Annette. Um, she's getting a lot of crap uh, these days, I, I hear. I, I haven't seen her since the World Series, but, uh, you know, she's young, and she will uh, she will become a little bit more media savvy, but I, I think she's fantastic. Uh, I really like her as a person. She's quite intelligent uh, in, in a lot of things other than poker, and, and obviously her poker skills are, are excellent. Um, you know, I think it's just a matter of time before she kind of comes into her own and and uh, rectifies some of the things that are kind of going astray for her. We've got a, a bunch of questions coming in via the viewer chat log. Uh, Jay Austin wants to know, what player not featured on the show would you like to partner with? Wow, not featured on the show. Uh, well, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I think I would like to... I would like to have played with, uh, well, Johnny Chan was on the show. He's featured, so can't really say that. Uh, I would say the people not invited, the poker star, the poker stars guys, uh, I think I would have uh, liked to have partnered with maybe uh, Joe Cata. Joe Cata? Yeah. You, you could have given me 100 guesses. I probably would yeah. have gone to Joe Cata. How come Joe Cata? Yeah. One of the young kids, you know, I don't have a lot in common uh, <laughs> with a lot of those guys. But he obviously has great chops, and uh, I know he's a good kid. Uh, we actually rented beach houses next to each other in L.A. about uh, six months ago, just total, totally by coincidence. Uh -huh. And I, I got to meet him and, and know him a little bit there. It seems like a, a really good, really good, strong performer. I wish we could, you know, on a separate note, I wish this Poker Stars Full Tilt feud thing could, could end, and, and we could play on their shows, and they could play on our shows, and everyone could just be one happy family. It seems kind of stupid to me that you know that their pros can't play on full tilt shows and we don't play on the big game and all that just come on guys yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it was really friendly for a long time and then you know really within the last year six months or so it yeah. just seems like it's uh the relations have just gotten more and more tense why do you think that's happened just well, the money involved market. yeah dan knows more than anyone it's a brutal marketplace out there um you know every customer that uh that the companies can acquire you know uh, are re really meaningful and uh, you know I, I guess uh, the powers that be at both companies just believe that uh, it's in their best interest to to not have the other pros featured uh, it's hard to argue with that uh, but it sure doesn't make it as much fun you know we'd love to play against some of their guys and I'm sure they'd love to play against some of us and you know just kind of it, it just seems kind of bitter and petty to me but uh, you know then again, what the hell do I know? <laughs> We've had a lot of talk on the show over the last few weeks about the value of a WSOP Europe bracelet. We know you really want to win that bracelet. You've come close. <laughs> if you want it in Europe, does it does it mean as much? Does it weigh oh, as much? Oh, yeah. Uh, any bracelets uh, that the World Series calls a bracelet, it's a bracelet. Uh, you know, uh, the old school days when they only had 12 or 15 up for grabs or over, uh, we all have to realize that they're going to be 55 or you know, up to 60 uh, available in any calendar year. And, you know, just there there are a lot more bracelets, but they're a lot harder to win than they used to be, I think. Uh, right. You know, I got very, very close uh, quite a few times in 2002, 2003, 2004. And, uh, you know, you've seen the game evolve just like I have. The players are much better. The fields are much deeper. Uh, it just feels like uh, it's, it's much, much harder to win now, unless your name's Phil Ivey. <laughs> Uh, last question for you, and then we got to go. Are you going to reinstitute the World Series of Rochambeau? We have it every year. Uh, a, a guy named Austin Schaff uh, won it this year at the July 4th party. Uh, he won his 10 grand and entered the main event. A uh, 21 year old kid out of Michigan, actually from the same city as Joe Cat, believe it or not. Okay. Um, I believe that he lasted a good day and a half uh, on that 10,000. But uh, yeah, we have it every year. and. Uh, we would welcome you uh, at the next July 4th party to, to pony up your 500 bucks and give it a shot. Uh, that, that event is uh, obviously uh, one of the highlights of my year every year, not only because it's a lot of fun, but uh, also because we get to do a lot of great work for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. And we raise uh, $6,000 with that just with that one event. Uh, you know, it takes about an hour and it's, uh, it's great to see the, the players pony up for such a great cause. We also have a Quite a few uh, November Niners that are going to be helping us out at the final table. Uh, we're in the bad beat on cancer patch, and got to appreciate them for that. Real quick, Phil, who's your pick for the no November Nine? 
Wow. You know, on my radio show for ESPN.com, uh, I've, I've spoken to all of them with the exception of Candio. And uh, it, it's really tough. It's a really stacked uh, final table. I, I have to say that from a media perspective, all of the November 9 uh, are fantastic spokesmen. Uh, I think no matter who wins, we're going to have a champion that's uh, really going to help the game out substantially. Uh, and that's good to see. If I had to pick one guy... Um, Wow. Uh, I, I think I'm going to, I would have to either go with the grinder. I know he's a sentimental pick, uh, but he has the game. Uh, I think the other players are going to be a little fearful of him. Uh, I'm worried about his chip count a little bit. That's the only reason that he's not like way up there on the list. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go with the grinder. All right. Phil, thanks for joining us. Uh, I know it's already happened, but good luck on the doubles poker smile. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that hand was great. I, I really uh, I, I love that hand. What you didn't show was the timeout that I took right away uh, to ask Howard what I should do. Yeah, we and meant to show that, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, Howard told me to fold, and I, I just I, I couldn't do it. Uh, maybe I'm a sucker or whatever, but damn it, I had two pair. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's hard to make two uh, I'm not going to fold two pair in that spot uh, very often. I really felt like Huck and uh, Allen uh, were trying to push me around, and they knew that Howard and I weren't quite on the same wavelength in the hand. Right. And uh, they tried to punish me, but instead I punished them back and, <laughs> and built a big chip stack. So Great. Uh, thanks, Phil, and we will see you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right. We, uh, we need to get this wrapped up, but before we do, We've got a minute and a half to spare for poker metaphors. <laughs> Are you familiar with our poker metaphors? Yes. Poker metaphors signifying that you have to act quickly around. We're going to fire through as many questions as we can in one minute. Okay. Poker metaphors signifying that you have to act quickly. Tell me when you're ready, Colin. Ready, go. The worst character on Entourage is? Johnny Drama. If Who's Your Daddy was taken, if the name Who's Your Daddy was taken, I would have named my energy drink point. Victory. <laughs> the number of victory models I've accidentally seen naked on a shoot is? 100%. <laughs> the numbers I've intentionally seen naked on a shoot is? 100%. <laughs> San Diego in Spanish means? I don't know. The victory... Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the movie. Yeah. The whales, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the victory poker pro who gets laid the most is? Antonio. Least? Um, I, Blitz. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Blitz. <laughs> Dan Blitz blanks black people. Loves. <laughs> uh, the one model I'd most like to hire for a victory shoot is blank. Um, I have an answer. Five me. seconds. Melanie Iglesias. My favorite type of cheese is blank. Gouda. The last movie that made me cry was? Um, the Usual Suspects. <laughs> right. Just my favorite movie. Uh, if he's not a pro, a poker pro, in 25 years, the Maven's profession will be blank. Poker instructor. All right. Dan, thanks for coming on. A lot of fun. You're a great guest. Right. Anytime you. you want, I'll be here. Great. Sweet. And that's it for this week in poker. Next week, Brian, who do we have next week? That's a good question. Is next week... The we've, girls? Got, uh, we've got some burgers coming next week. We have burgers coming uh, we next week? We have burgers. We have Alex Outthread coming. Okay. And he owns a, a stout, I think it is, a hamburger joint in L.A. All right. And he's bringing us some hamburgers. <laughs> we should have uh, the grinder Skyping in. Okay, and grinder Skyping in. And any final words from our sponsors? Brian, why don't you, why don't you, why don't you take us to the close? I'll let thank, you close this one out. Thank you, Josh. Please check out stormondemand.com for all your hosting needs. Pokervt.com for your online poker training and use the uh, promo code exclusive to Wicked Chops Poker, TWIP10, Doubles Poker Championship, this Saturday, final table, Saturday, GSN, 9 p.m. And we're going to leave you here with a little teaser to uh, this week's show. Thank you. Well, in this hand you're about to see, uh, Phil Helmuth is going to limp in with a hand. Or we're going to leave you uh, with... You just don't um, see a lot of the, you know, younger, more aggressive players. Uh, ever, well, they don't ever really limp. I mean... But uh, it's, it's kind of a strange hand that plays out interestingly and puts Doyle actually in a tough spot. Let's take a look. Tony G, when we're three-handed, don't be doing the, what, the, 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 the BS and the talking. Kick it in two-handed. Three-handed okay. is... Okay. When it comes queen, seven, deuce, 
he, I mean, he has two fours. I've tried to bluff him like a bunch of times. And he, he just keeps calling me the fours. So, I mean, he's a hold on artist. I saw him call 11, 10,000 with Jack Kai just recently. <laughs> that's why I had to call him with the. Uh, that's why I had to call him with the nines. Yep. Okay, stop it right there. You got three options, right? Call, raise, fold. Best option with this hand is fold. Second best is raise. Third best is the one he chose. It, limping in with this is just, ugh, it's not a really good hand to limp with. It doesn't play very well after the flop. Um, if you happen to get it in against ace-king, you know, you're going to go broke every time it comes 10-jack-queen, pretty much. Um, it's, it's, it's just not one of those hands that plays well after the flop. And if you are going to play it, I mean, you've got to get aggressive with it and hope to just pick up the blinds. It's just, if you're going to play hands, you know, I would, I would rather see him, if he's going to do this, limping with hands like five, sixes, seven, nine suited, stuff like that. But king nine off, nah. Don't, don't add that to your repertoire. Let's take a look. Yep, that was good. Bill limps well, in. I, just, I felt like maybe he had to do it. So does the loose cannon, as does Daniel. Doyle, ace seven suited. Gets a free look at the flop. You did. You did the right thing. You won the part two. For once. You, you avoided any bad cards. Trey nine nine, two hearts on the flop. Huge flop for Helmuth, three nines. Doyle Brunson has, however, flopped the not flush draw. Negreanu checks, Brunson checks, Helmuth checks. Setting a trap. Stop right there for just a second. I, I think Helmuth's check here makes a lot of sense. Um, he's got the king of hearts in his hand, so he's not all that afraid of hard heart. Uh, he, you know, it doesn't look like a board that many people have hit. And if someone does have 8-9 or 9-10, they're probably going to go ahead and bet it. The one thing that I'm a little curious about, and I think he probably should have took a stab here, was Doyle. Doyle flopped the nut flush draw in this spot. I know the board's paired and that sucks, but he's in the big blind. He could represent a whole bunch of hands. He could represent 9-3 or whatever the case may be. But I think that if someone else bets, Doyle's going to have to call. So in a spot like this, in an unraised pot, I think you're, you might be better off taking the lead here and go ahead and bet something like 1,200 or 1,400, even 1,500 into the 22. And, you know, then you'll sort of fish out the nine because, you know, he's going to bet this flop. And obviously, as we know, Phil Helm is going to at least call, and that'll give away the fact that... Uh, you know, he's got something strong. But by checking it, it makes it tougher to figure out because you don't really know if they're just bluffing at the flop or if they're actually, you know, have it. Welcome back to the Doubles Poker Championship. Each team fighting tooth and nail with a million dollars to the winner. Letterer and Gordon still on top of the leaderboard with 808,000 chips. I think at this point, if you're the chip leader, you put a little pressure, you open a lot of pots. Well, nobody wants to get eliminated in fourth. You've said it before, but it's worth saying again. Only 100,000 to the fourth place team, while a million to the first place team. It's a huge disparity. Exactly. I would be opening a lot of pots if I had the chip lead. Well, Letter raises it up to 47,000. Over to Seed, and Seed looks like he's calling. No, no, he's raising it up with 5-4 suited. Well, Seed is a very careful player, but I do believe he's made a mistake here. I do believe he intended to call, although it would be a little bit of a strange call with 5-4 suited from the small blind. Seed and Cunningham only have about 20 big blinds. Letter trying to decide if it is in fact a mistake. He would want to push if he thought it was a mistake. He just calls. It's almost like a live misclick. Yeah, this is a very strange situation. Well, both teams get a piece of it. Letterer and Gordon with the better piece, though. Very, very tough spot for Cunningham. Cunningham's going to lead out 80,000 with bottom pair. Over to Gordon. And we know Gordon's not folding. All in. Nope, he's going to move all in. Well, effectively all in. He's actually raising it up to 217,000, which is enough to put Huxseed and Cunningham all in if they call. Allen was just in an impossible spot this hand. I have no idea how you're supposed to play it, given the situation. You can make a case for check raising all in. You could make a case for playing it exactly how he's played it. Very, very difficult. Oh, we're so short anyway. I might as well call a timeout. <laughs> well, they're going to use their timeout. He's as confused as you are, Brandon. <laughs> you like that? I'm so short. I might as well call. Are we getting exactly? Well, a little bit less than four to one. I mean, he's got to have some air in there if we're going to call it. Or just, I mean, I guess he could definitely have some flush draws. Is he going to ever have a king jack? Well, yeah, that's why I didn't. 
I kind of don't think I should have met Eddie. I should have just stopped. I didn't like betting with Eddie, but now that we put ourselves <laughs> know, in that position, I, I mean, a few calls the time I was going to move in. I know. But, but you if know, we Phil's been just, so weirdly blasty, bluffy, goofy, and he might have two deuces. You think there's a chance I move draw. in? All the flush draws, I mean, what's the odds? If they have ace, ten of hearts, what odds dog are we? It'll be like... Pop four to one or something. So it's so odds we're getting anyway. And it's not like we're going to outlast anybody. I guess I'm just calling that, I don't right? Know, I mean, it's the, the payout anybody? of the structure. I mean, it's, I mean, it seems kind of borderline. I, I put us in that it situation, really, though. It doesn't really do me as good to call this borderline for anybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, call the court. Okay. Back to square one. Back to square one. Allen noted that if it's a neutral situation, he should fold because variance hurts him and helps the other players. This is a really tough spot. I think that getting about three and a half to one, you have to tend towards a call. I'm gonna call. Cunningham does call. I say ace ten. Yeah, ace ten. The cards go on their back. You call with that. You have to. I think the timeout analysis was correct. Did we raise my accident that amount? <laughs> Given that they were going to bet 80 and call, they would have been better off just shoving. I would have probably shoved that. He was shocked when you got that hand, right? <laughs> and he said, <laughs> what do I do now? It doesn't matter. Like, oh, yeah. the same thing, Nothing really matters. We just have to hit. I wonder if you're like, well, I'm sure they don't know me. Raising your own if I bet 80, that would kind of suck. Yeah, there's definitely some hands he might do that way. The turn card, eight of spades. Oh, that helps. Yeah, actually, we had three in a row. More outs here for Cunningham and Seed. The worst turn would have been... What, the Six, a four, or a five will do it for him. Anything else, and they are eliminated from the final table and the doubles poker championship. It's a date, right? You can't look, Phil? No. Here's the river. It's a six! Unbelievable. What? Cunningham sticks it in. And they make a straight on the river. That is exceedingly painful for the team of Letterer and Gordon. Oh, you can see it on Gordon's face. They just can't believe their eyes. Yeah. Four or five well, suited. I say, well, I, have, I think he has nothing. I, mean, you know, I didn't really. Well, of the eight players remaining, Phil has definitely been the most aggressive. He knows the math, and he knows the structure, and he's acted accordingly. <laughs>